which is approximately half of what the authorities uh, passed through to us. But because we have been putting money aside for capital project funding over the years, uh, we are able to keep our water uh, rates uh, competitive. And as a matter of fact, uh, if you go to uh, page, I believe it's Eight. Eight. You'll see that even with the moderate increase in there, uh, that our water and sewer rates remain competitive and that we're in the lower quartile uh, of the surrounding communities uh, with our fees. So, so moving back into the summary. Uh, we do have a uh, infrastructure investments of 9.7 million within the budget and they're outlined on the page four of your document. Uh, one of the most important parts, if you'll open the page four, is, is not what's in here so much as what isn't in here. You will see that there are no local street capital projects in here. That is an unfortunate uh, situation. The reason for that is uh, what's going on in terms of funding uh, for streets uh, in general in the state of Michigan, uh, majors and locals, we are, Michigan is at the lowest at the lowest among competitive states uh, in, in that type of funding. And so as uh, Mike Kowalski likes to say, you'll get mill and fill uh, with the monies that we have available, but if you want a high quality major reconstruction, we have to come up with this, uh, uh, auxiliary dollars. I might uh, uh, indicate that our finance committee is doing some homework now uh, on funding of uh, road projects having to do with SADs as well as uh, having to do with millages. It's preliminary work and we'll be reporting to council at a later date on those items. Uh, this is the list of capital projects. Each one of them comes back to council for formal approval. Uh, as they come up for construction. Uh, going back to page three, there are some important numbers on page three. It's a sort of a homemade uh, exhibit from the audit. And what it shows is that if and when the appeals uh, of commercial <coughs> uh, are reduced or under better control, or cease or come back to a norm, uh, there could be better times ahead. Because the monies that are circled, equalization reserve, uh, all those monies could be become fund balance if they're not used, if they're not necessary for for it to be set aside for appeals. Unfortunately at this point, appeals are still running at record levels. However, many of the worst ones have gone through the system. And uh, at December 31st of 2013, we should know a lot more about our uh, situation going forward. At that time, which is basically six months from now, we will have another audited year financials to, uh, to be aware of. It will be the audit of the, of the uh, operations ending June 30, 2013. And we will have assessing uh, numbers pretty solid at that point that will be presented to the council. Then we will know if we have another negative year. This year that we're going into 13-14, the assessor uh, has a negative 3.4% uh, as what was submitted to the county. And on top of that, because of appeal, <coughs> we put an additional 5.1. And so we're working with a negative 8.5% in our tax base. So when a given department goes to put their budget together, like Parks and Recreation, the first challenge they have is their major source of in one of their major sources. In Parks and Rec, it's about 60%. But in the general fund, it's, it's much higher. The major source of funding is down 8.5%. And so that's what we had to, uh, to battle against in, in, in this year's budget. And basically, uh, we've come through it 
uh, pretty well, as you'll see when we go through the, the entire document. Uh, turning to, uh, I believe, page 8 we talked about. Uh, page 6, 8 has a road funding uh, article. Uh, it's a decent summation of what's uh, happening in the state of Michigan. And what it really tells us is that, uh, is that basically uh, we are the cavalry. We're going to have to figure this out pretty much on their own. It doesn't appear that the state's going to be able to figure out how to handle uh, our road uh, problems. So we've got to take a look at what is available uh, to us within our own uh, span of control. With that, the next... Uh, few pages are the administrator's mayor's uh, letter. Uh, they've been in the possession of council for quite some time and they speak for them themselves. So I would like to move on to, to page 23. If you look at this. this is a comparison of the millage uh, between the two years, 2012-13, the current year we're in, as opposed to the projected year of 13-14. You will see that the budget overall, the millage to the, to the taxpayer is up 3.3% and virtually all of it is because of the requirements of the fire police pension. Uh, that element of the tax base is up 20%. And again, as I, as I indicated, the reasons for that are that's uh, actuarial studies, uh, tax base uh, decline, uh, is, is figures in there. Uh, as well as the investments spread over, over they, I believe they use a five or six year uh, spread. Uh, the other the very small number you'll see under Public Acts 298-59, uh, four, three decimal points over, that is a $50,000 millage that we have uh, basically for, for tax base uh, initiatives or to to basically uh, attract and maintain our business community. Uh, that's been available to us for a number of years. We've never levied it, but we started levying it in 2012-13 uh, in, in, in that we knew we had to increase the levy that year anyway, and it was just as good a year as any to start realizing uh, the funds. Page 24 is a 22-year look at our millage, and what you'll see is, of course, it's on the high side now, and that's because our values are down uh, and also because our, our residents uh, in May of 2011 uh, supported the maintenance of our police and fire department at, at their uh, current levels and resoundingly approved a police and fire millage with a small portion for parks and recreation, which at that time was a heavy override of just a small piece and uh, also for, for the library. That was by an 83% uh, margin, and we, again, in this journey that we've had, we need to remind ourselves that we have not laid anyone off, and nor have we especially uh, threatened any job of, the, of any sworn police officer or firefighter. Uh, if you'll turn to page 25, you'll see a side-by-side -side of the um, tax revenue factors, uh, and you see the number eight and a half negative there uh, over and over again, and that is simply uh, the, our budget projections, uh, which are made up of two pieces. One is 3.4, that's an actual, uh, that goes to the county, that's fixed. And then the 5% on top of that is our estimate of what is needed for uh, to handle the appeals that come in this year. Now, should the appeals come in less, then that helps our financial picture uh, moving forward. But what we do in our budgeting, which has kept us uh, in good condition financially for many, many years, is we're, we're cautious in our revenues and our ex in, in, in the revenue projections, and uh, we are uh, excruciatingly honest in our uh, expenditures, <laughs> meaning that we that we make every attempt to, to fully uh, show our uh, expenditure picture. Uh, what 
What that combination gives you is what's called pleasant surprises, uh, as opposed to uh, waking up with a with a horror story at the end of a of an audit. Uh, our audits normally tell us that we were either on budget or that we outproduced our budget plan, meaning we did a little bit better than our budget. Uh, turning to the next page, this is what, page 26, this is what the typical tax bill is for city taxes for a $100,000 home. And as you can see, the majority of it goes for police, fire, and EMS. That's as it should be. That's job one. And uh, when, you're, when you're looking at how you utilize your tax dollars, uh, this is how, how it breaks down. Uh, $1,225 a year. Uh, it's about, it's about uh, under $4 a day for some of the best services uh, uh, that you'll find anywhere. Page 27. Uh, again, this is the way the, the breakdown of the total tax bill. Uh, we, uh, as a city, receive about 40% of all the taxes collected. Uh, the 60% goes to uh, the uh, county and other uh, outside authorities, uh, including uh, a portion for uh, education institutions. Turning to page 28, uh, one of the changes we made in our budget procedures this year is the first bullet. State shared revenues per state projections and full EVIP. What that means is uh, generally, over the years, we've discounted the state projections. In some years, they were so inaccurate, we ignored them. Uh, however, they are becoming more dependable. Uh, the data behind them are, is better than it's been in the past. And so we've been, we've been following them closely. And this year, we're actually going to use what uh, we have received from the state. And then we're going to monitor it, uh, what, what information we re receive from the state. And so you're going to see a significant increase when we get into the detail. You'll see a significant increase in state shared revenues. A piece of it is because the economy has picked up uh, and certain tax collections have, have uh, increased. But the other piece is because we're now using the, the state's numbers rather than discounting them. So there's an adjustment uh, in there. Uh, EVIP is the uh, uh, incentive program, economic vitality incentive program. Uh, you've heard me uh, crab about this a little bit over the last couple of years. Uh, what this is is a, a, a set of requirements that you go through now uh, as a city to, to uh, be able to realize the full uh, statutory uh, revenue sharing that can come to a given city. I'm proud to say we've got 100% on that in, in, since the program started and we pretty much have acclimated to what we need to, we need to do to realize those, those revenues. Uh, treasure projections, of course, for investment income. As we're all aware, we're in record low uh, interest rate environment. That affects uh, our, uh, our uh, income from, uh, from investments. Uh, no use of fund balance for operations in the general fund. Uh, you'll see later in one of the conclusions on the handout is uh, the general fund is running without use of uh, uh, fund balance for operations. There is a fund balance use, but that's for handling tax appeals. Uh, for those of who aren't real familiar with the problem with appeals is two-thirds of the tax base in this city is comprised of commercial and industrial properties. And uh, those, are the, those are where it hit the hardest in an economic downturn. And that is why we as a city have been hit uh, harder than any city of our size uh, in the state of Michigan because we are two-thirds commercial. Uh, of course, when the economy picks up, uh, we can you know, hopefully be able to adjust upward. But it's been a tough ride for, uh, for the last five years. Most of our decline in our tax base <coughs> is due to commercial appeals, uh, meaning office, uh, underproducing office uh, environment. Uh, in, the in the library and parks and rec, 
uh, we'll talk later on. They have used some monies uh, for operations. Uh, they were not able to absorb uh, yet uh, the total brunt of, of this accumulation uh, over the last five years of negative numbers. Uh, zero percent across the board wage adjustment. Uh, it's been a while since uh, there have been any raises here, uh, and that is fitting for the environment. Uh, managed attrition <coughs> program, we, that continues. Monitoring of economic conditions and multi-year financial planning focus. We're always looking out at least five years. Page 29 tells you how one of the major methods that we've used of surviving over the last 10 years uh, with dignity uh, is uh, basically when, when uh, uh, employees leave, it's very difficult to fill a position, I would say that, that some departments would say that's a slight understatement. Uh, but over the 10 year period, 2003-04, when we, we first went on a diet in 2000. 3, 4, and I will credit the City Council for that. Uh, I don't think anyone on the Council could predict the Great Recession, but uh, there was um, some concern about how much fund balance was being used at that period point. And so uh, that's when we embarked upon uh, a five-year plan, and we've been on one continuously uh, adjusted uh, each year since. And over this period, we've reduced staff by over 200 positions. 218 uh, positions at this at this count, and that number number changes uh, almost daily, and uh, about 26 percent of the workforce. So we've been on a 10-year diet, and we're going to have to pretty much stay on it at least for another year or so. But we also have to remember that we have to get the work done too. So there may be need to be some some uh, minor adjustments in that in that game plan. But overall. Uh, I'm suggesting that that's a game plan we've got to follow, at least going into uh, the mid-year when we will know a lot more about what our situation is going forward. Uh, just uh, an hour or two before uh, coming uh, to this meeting, uh, I received the, I'm on page 30 now, I received the Michigan uh, Cost Index. It comes uh, from uh, American City and County uh, Magazine, the Public Works um, publication, and what it shows is that the percent increase uh, from last year, from the municipal cost index, uh, meaning the cost of a city, typical city operation, is up one and a half percent. I'd like to report that ours is down 1.6 percent. So that's what page 30 actually uh, basically says. Uh, anything that changed more than 5%, we footnoted it. Uh, we're proud of our excruciating footnotes uh, because that's that's proof of the respect we have for the reader. Uh, everything, we try to explain everything in this document. Uh, and uh, I don't think there's anything of significance that, that we missed. If there is, I, I know that this audience will pick up on it. Uh, but if you look down the list, uh, general operating revenues and, and police and fire levy are both down eight and a half percent. That reflects the tax base uh, assumption of negative eight and a half percent. Tax administration fees would go down accordingly, less tax money to administer. Uh, constitutional and statutory, you see significant increases there. Uh, we've explained that that is a combination of using the state's uh, numbers that heretofore we've uh, discounted uh, as being uh, basically uh, too high, and they have been over the years, but they're pretty accurate now, I think. And the statutory as well, uh, we'd like to bring to your attention in the footnotes five and six are worth taking a look. Um, so we're saying a combined state shared revenue increase of almost 19%, $985,000. Uh, three primary reasons, uh, gradually improving state economy helps both constitutional and statutory um, because they're reflective of sales tax uh, receipts. Uh, we received 100% of our statutory EVIP payments, as we already indicated. Uh, the most significant factor, uh, or the largest element, is constitutional. 
and that's basically that we're using the state uh, numbers uh, for the first time uh, in several years. I'd like to bring to all of our attention uh, the fact that there's two significant uh, concepts we need to keep in mind and not to get uh, too excited about this 19%, although we're, we're glad to have it. Um, we're obviously going to closely monitor the <coughs> numbers, hoping the state numbers do come through um, because we're, more, we're relying more heavily on them. Our general approach here is we do not like adjusting the budget uh, uh, frequently because it creates a negative fiscal uh, viewpoint uh, to, uh, to the public when you're constantly uh, revising uh, your plan. So we're going to we're going to very closely uh, monitor these funds. Uh, and the other thing we need to be concerned with is there is one or more legislative proposals hinting at potentially raiding these funds for road financing. So we'll be asking our legislative committee to, to, to uh, be uh, keenly aware of, uh, of those uh, proposals. Uh, we are certainly pleased with these increases, but we need to keep them in perspective that our 13-14 total for these revenues is 35% below the high water mark of 2001-2002. Uh, the constitutional portion is, uh, is uh, down 35% uh, uh, and the uh, statutory portion is 81% below the levels of 2001-2002. So while we do appreciate uh, the upward trend uh, has got a long way to go to, to return to its uh, former uh, former uh, totals. Uh, you'll note uh, the projections for court revenues. Court revenues are up. Uh, this is basically reflects two things. Number one, uh, our court administration and our, our court relationship is, is good between the city and the court. This is not always true in most in many jurisdictions. It is true here, and we continue to work closely uh, with the court to to uh, assist them in every way administratively uh, that we can. Uh, also, the court is cautious in their revenue projections, and when when we studied the outcome of the uh, audit at 6:30, uh, 2012, we felt that an upward adjustment was uh, was uh, justified. And it also reflects some new uh, ordinances that we have uh, that, that, that also come into the picture. Uh, reimbursements <coughs> are showing a large increase. That's the SAFER grant, uh, which is a firefighter uh, grant that we uh, are currently enjoying. We need to keep in mind that, as a matter of fact, one of the things we'll be talking about is that we're hoping for an extension of that grant, uh, but it is in the budget right now at the uh, level that we uh, anticipate, uh, but that 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 piece could could uh, come to a screeching halt at pretty much any time. That's an eight hundred dollar thousand uh, dollar item, but that does explain the reimbursement increase. Uh, and uh, the last number that's over five percent is a is a, is a meaning that we use less fund balance to balance the budget this year than the year before, and that's a, that's a good thing. So moving on uh, to page 32, this is the variances in the budget for the various departments um, in the general fund. Uh, these are the uh, expenditures, which has covered the revenues. Uh, you will see that virtually every one of the, uh, not virtually, every one of the items that's over 5% is due to the uh, reductions in staff within the given departments and the redu reduction in costs uh, accordingly. For example, let's take purchasing. We know our purchasing uh, uh, agent uh, uh, retired, and so that's out of the, uh, of the totals uh, at, this, at this juncture. Uh, it shows an overall decrease of 1.6% of the general fund. Moving on to 34, uh, this is the budget comparison all funds, and you will see that, again, the general fund down 1.6, facilities down, um, 
the library fund, uh, this is a good time to talk about uh, some confusion that's arisen in the, with regard to library and library hours. Uh, the library fund is down 6.2%. Uh, it uh, reflects the 8.5% decline in the tax base uh, and the tightening of operation and decreased hours. Uh, there's been some misunderstanding because there was a slight upward. Uh, there was an add of four hours into the library schedule. We have to keep in mind that compared to the old schedule, okay, the library's hours are reduced by approximately 30%. So there have been some confusing uh, uh, reporting on this. But the, if you take the old summer hours and compare them with the new summer hours, down 29%, even with the new Friday, 1 to 5 in the picture. 1 to 5 hour, uh, hours open, 1 to 5 on Friday. And if you take the old winter hours and compare them with the new winter hours, it's 66 hours in the winter before, 48 hours now. That's a 27% reduction. And we have to understand the library's done everything they can you can think of to try to still make things convenient for the public. For example, the winter schedule, uh, although it's down 27%, uh, has a library availability seven days a week. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, eight hours. Friday, four hours. Saturday, eight hours. And Sunday, four hours. So that's, those are the facts as opposed to somehow some communication got to somewhat confused in that regard. Uh, local streets, you'll see, uh, when you take majors and locals together, they're down, and that simply uh, reflects, again, uh, the lack of uh, state funding for four roads. Uh, as you understand, we're doing everything we can to get federal funding, and are successful in that, and Fred has pointed out, and I think it's a good point, that even though when we were shovel ready back in uh, what nine was it nine ten or yeah, nine, ten. Uh, and we were disappointed that it didn't result in any federal funding. Uh, the fact that we're ready now and and we've disciplined ourselves so we could still provide the local match. Uh, some of these uh, shovel ready projects now are coming forward and we're getting approved for federal dollars. So we're we're definitely out there. Uh, attempting to maximize every uh, dollar that we can get for, for road funding, and we know it's a very serious problem. Uh, block grant, uh, we're showing down 36 percent, but that's uh, somewhat inaccurate. Now we're going to, I guess we'll stick with a new number, Fred, 422. Erica, yeah. we'll use that, and you'll, you'll see that in the final. There's always a fine tuning between this recommended budget and the final budget, which will be approved on June 17th. <laughs> And that'll be one of the fine tuning items. The page 36 shows our grant funding. Uh, the high level point was in 9, 10, and 10, 11, and that was because of the employment grants that we got. <coughs> uh, and uh, the 12, 13, and 13, 14 numbers reflect the safer grant. Uh, the, the situation with the safer grant is that it was proposed when we awarded the grant that an extension shouldn't be too difficult to get, but now they're, they're putting us through some, some serious hoops to, to, uh, to get, an, get an extension. So we're working on that now, and then there's the hopes that the grant will continue another two years, uh, but we'd have to reapply. So we're making the assumption in the budget that we will get the extension that was uh, articulated as being relatively uh, assured, and now it's looking a little bit more difficult, but we hope to be successful. Uh, if not, we're going to have an immediate budget uh, uh, challenge uh, of uh, about $800,000. Uh, so, again, we make appropriate use of grant dollars, and they're basically focused uh, on either public safety or on the uh, <coughs> functionality of the city or the housing staff. Uh, page 37 tells the, tells the picture about why we're 
uh, in the workout uh, mode at all times, tight, tight, tight mode and on a diet. Uh, you can see in the history of the city, uh, you look at the percentage growth every year up until 9-10, plus, 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 uh, each year. 9-10 uh, started the first negative year. There's a little differential between some of the numbers that we've used. It uh, depends on, on uh, how you count. But when you, when you add all these up, uh, 2.6, 15.1, 13.2, 11, and 8.5, and uh, you'll see that it's, it's big numbers. Uh, and so that's, that's, what we're, that's what we've been wrestling with. Uh, if the 8.5 uh, number that we're using is, proves to be ultra-conservative and uh, doesn't come in that low, well, that's good because that puts some money in the fund balance. And our fund balance levels right now, official fund balance levels of, the, of available dollars, um, is uh, at about two, um, around two and a half, 2.8 percent, and that's reflected on page three. General fund unassigned fund balance is a million seven hundred nine six sixteen, and that's in the budget uh, uh, general fund budget that totals. 65 million, so that's about 2.8. When you look at the building permit values at the top of page 37, you can see that there hasn't been much happening since 910. We're hoping for some good news there. Uh, we're doing everything we can. We're going to increase our marketing of the city. We are increasing our focus on retention and, uh, and uh, new business, uh, uh, new business activity. But we have to remember that the thing that we're in the most control of in our life is our cost of doing business. We cannot totally control the economy. We wish we could. We'll do everything we can to increase the tax base. Otherwise, and that's retention and expansion activities, uh, marketing activities. Uh, but when all is said and done, uh, the thing that we're in the most control of is our cost of doing business. That's what we've been focusing on. We'll continue to focus on that while still getting the job done and keeping our standards of service uh, up to the public. Uh, if you look at page 38, this is what I've been talking about in terms of the composition of our tax base, uh, where you take our commercial personal and industrial, you get the two-thirds. Residential is about 36 percent. Uh, commercial business type uh, uh, values are uh, 60, uh, 64 percent, 64.3. That's the story. Uh, obviously, if the commercial properties come back, uh, that will be a great help. Uh, we are seeing some upward movement in the residential uh, and uh, it should be reflected in the next year's numbers, uh, but uh, it takes quite a bit of residential growth uh, to overcome uh, uh, any kind of negative uh, you know, on the commercial side. The personal property, uh, first of all, is sort of a misnomer. Personal property is property that uh, business owns to uh, create income. <coughs> personal problems. I don't know where the, where, where the name came from, but, but I'm sure it made sense back in the day when when uh, somebody came up with it. But uh, that's uh, machinery and equipment, and uh, there's been a lot of talk in Lansing about in legislation about what's going to happen there. But what we do know is in 2013-14, in uh, there's no effect. But in 14-15, we'll get in minimum a $750,000 one-time uh, hit, and that's because all, all business properties at that point that have personal property valued at uh, $40,000 or less uh, will be uh, uh, excluded from personal property taxes. That'd be a loss of about $750,000 of revenues uh, to us. 
this is the best case. Uh, there's a, this uncertainty having to do with an election in August of 2014. Correct. Um, as well as the formulas for personal property tax, which basically are excruciatingly confusing and really tell us that if we're going to uh, recover, I don't think any of it will recover all of our losses, but if we're going to recover most of them, we're going to have to do it through some sort of tax that we impose on taxpayers. So it's sort of a zero-sum situation, but it's a shift. Uh, the industrial and uh, personal property holders uh, get a savings, and that savings will be made up uh, elsewhere in the tax base. Uh, stay tuned on that one. Uh, if the whole thing fails in 15, <coughs> 15, 14, then all we've lost is 750, one year's worth. Stay tuned. Uh, pie charts, this is what we normally end up with. Uh, are there significant changes? Not really. Um, the general fund uh, of property taxes is our biggest revenue. Uh, district court has increased a bit by percentage. Sanitation a little bit down because of the new sanitation contract saves the public uh, some money. Uh, and the state shared revenue is up a bit because of the uh, use of uh, the state numbers as well as some economic uh, recovery showing in those numbers uh, on the revenue on the revenue side and the expenditure side pretty much uh, status quo from the, the previous year um, and uh, that's simply a reflection of, of uh, our tight staffing levels. Uh, uh, Taken as a whole, uh, page 41, uh, property taxes uh, comprise 36% of the total income of the city. Well, one might ask, well, how come it's two thirds of the general fund, but only a little over one third of the all funds? And that's because a lot of the water and sewer dollars are in here, and that's a uh, that's a, a major. A significant slice of, of the pie. Um, state shared revenues and grants have increased a bit. Uh, you can see investment income is minuscule. It's one tenth of one percent of the overall because of the interest rate environment. Expenditure patterns basically are about the same as last year because capital projects totals in the water and sewer fund are pretty stable between the, between the two years. So that takes us to the budget schedule, and then if you could do the handout and then see the one pager at this point. I think there's enough on the go around for pretty much everyone that's here. I've tried to summarize the book in one page. Uh, I apologize, I used the back of the paper too, but still only one piece of paper. And it basically tells the whole story. The on the third, which is today, we had the study session, and we we're, we're in the discussion phase of that. Um, the uh, June fourth to the sixteenth, we will be re, re reviewing all the budget detail and uh, developing the budget video. This is the script for the budget video. Just received it this afternoon. Uh, doing a little, uh, little work on, on that, but, but I, uh, I'm pleased that we have a, at least a draft of, uh, at this point. Uh, we have committed to, to communicating our budget in plain English to the public in a format that makes it helpful, useful, and understandable, and that's transparency. Uh, we've been at it for many, many years, and as a matter of fact, uh, received the GFOA award, the highest award they have for communication years ago for being the first city to put the budget on a video uh, format. Um, on the 17th, we will adopt the budget at a special meeting, uh, and uh, I, will, I will just uh, conclude by saying this. 
that when you look at the entire picture uh, over all these years, we have maintained service levels here. And in fact, there's been significant improvements in certain areas. Uh, seven day a week work enforcement is one of the areas. We've also improved our appearance programs uh, by uh, uh, engaging in greater intergovernmental cooperation to another units of government. Uh, we've reduced our employee count by over 200 uh, people, or about 26%, without layoffs. And I want to say to these people here, and I get emotional at this, what these employees have done here, and this council starting in 2003, it's basically not nothing short of a miracle. It's unbelievable what, what, where we stand today as compared to where we would stand if it wasn't done for the effort, the efforts of this group, uh, unified, and uh, we, we have shared the pain, and we've done it the way they tell you to do it, the textbooks. And I'm very proud to be a part of it, and I'm very proud of the achievements of our employees and of the leadership of the city council these endeavors. So with that, uh, I'll conclude my presentation. Be glad to take any questions uh, there might be. But again, I want to thank uh, uh, everyone for, first of all, this is the most exciting stuff in the world. Uh, and second of all, for the support and the unity that we've had over all these years to, to still be standing and fighting at this point. That? Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Um, questions from Council, Mr. Moss? Yeah, I'll start off by saying yeah, I got an, uh, an email alert today from MERS, which is one of the Lansing news newspapers um, that kind of set up political alerts that uh, the governor has declared yet another financial emergency in a different city, on Tramick this time. And when we sit here with a presentation like this, and especially because I just came back from the Mackinac Policy Conference, and people ask, you know, key stakeholders, what's going on in Southfield? I said, we're going into our budgeting session, and we're going to, again, pass a balanced budget. We're, we're in the middle of a storm, but we're weathering it. And, you know, when you, when you hear the presentation like this, uh, there's clear hard work that uh, you put forth, Mr. Charette, and it's really, truly appreciated by the council. Um, and, and city staff, uh, we appreciate your work, too, because we're not going to get an email alert like that for the city of Southfield. So uh, I think the overview is is as best as it can be. I think it was very clear. Like I, I really this is understandable. This is readable. I had two um, two minor questions just in some of the details. Like on page five, the the boilers at the two fire stations. I know that two of our other fi fire stations are newer. Is there is there going to be another need for another boiler uh, in the in coming budgets? Should we have just added it and see if we can get everything? together, or are those the only two uh, that are in need right now? Well, I appreciate you bringing that up, because it's something I neglected to mention. Uh, one of the boilers we want to put under the superintendent control of the building authority, because it's an $85,000 project and it's $80,000, and boilers are not something we necessarily want to get too deeply into the council, they're not too exciting. Uh, they're real exciting if they don't work right now. Uh, so uh, we'd like to, and we will come back with that, but yes, these are the ones that remain. Um, basically what we do is we stretch out the, the useful life, but when the repairs start accumulating and the energy efficiency declines, that's when we, uh, we replace them. Okay. So these are the two with the needs right now. Jim, we did do energy audits as part of our energy block grant, and that was part of how these ones were identified as well. The savings, I, I there's the payback is within five years on both of them. And we can pull up those reports too. Okay. Uh, question. My second question was just me for my own curiosity's sake because I don't know. Uh, the 46 district court. Do the other communities in that jurisdiction help fund the operations of that or whatever we, we you know we, we put into that? I'm sorry. The 46 district yeah. court. The other communities that are under that jurisdiction help. Yes. Okay. Yes. It, uh, it's a combination, uh, but what has uh, led to the increases in the comfort level with recognizing it. So I discussed this with the court administrator, who doubles as a magistrate, by the way. Um, 
that you know I wanted to take them up a bit. She said fine, and it's the ordinances that we have uh, in the area of code enforcement and in housing. Uh, the the rental ordinance uh, and other you know other uh, like a new newly approved uh, areas that can, that can lead to revenue. Uh, and the other thing is uh, basically the code enforcement. I mean, we're all over it, seven days a week. And so when there's violations, uh, you know, that that figures in, uh, in the revenue as well. But okay. yes, yeah, so the other jurisdictions are fortunate. All right, yeah, just I guess, you know, in summary, you, you put a lot of work into this. And, I mean, the conversations that we've had at this council table uh, over the last year are reflected in here, uh, and I just appreciate the work that you do every day here, and, and of our staff, and that we uh, we will survive another year uh, in weathering the storm that we are hopefully coming out of. Um, I want I want to add something uh, in the in the presentation. In these numbers is five hundred thousand dollars for it's in support services appropriation for. Uh, business retention and attraction programs and marketing the city with a tax base focus. And I'd like to suggest that uh, we have a group uh, formed. I'd like for Fred, to, Fred Zorn to, to be an, uh, a leading player in this to determine uh, you know, what, what we should do or how we should uh, utilize these dollars. And, uh, we could have a group formed uh, to all the council as well. That would be suggested. You're totally lost it now. Uh, what, what you said about the within the the support services appropriation, there's five hundred thousand dollars earmarked for business retention, attraction programs, and for marketing the city with a tax base focus. So those are the kinds of things. I, can, I, can I just interrupt? Sure. Um, I noticed the the expenses of business development, but no income. So this is something new. There is no income. So right. It's an expense. Right. Just expenses. It's, fun, it's, it's just funded. It's, it's within the total appropriation. I mean, there needs to be an. Um, it's funded somewhere else. Is what you're saying. Right. Okay. The. So we need to make some decisions on how those funds would, would be utilized, but we need to do something about this tax base. We know that we can't keep having these negative uh, inputs, and uh, we will come up with appropriate programs. And uh, if uh, if not, then that would that money would would be returned to fund. <coughs> so. um, on that topic, Tim, is it on page 32? Uh, where those funds are? Yes. Let me point out where it, 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 it lands. Sports services, about seven items down. Oh, okay. Overall appropriation is down, but within that total, it's $500,000 earmarked okay. for these activities. So we'll be, we'll be coming back to council with with some ideas and looking for some ideas on, on what we need to do to get this tax base going. And uh, Fred has got the credentials in that area, so I'd like to see him in charge in that in that regard. And with uh, if there's a, a council in, input, uh, then then maybe we need a a, a, a form a, a a group to decide you know what we're going to do. What, what what kind of approach we're going to be taking. So I, I would suggest that we do that. Uh, it could be either staff or it could be council involvement as well. Yeah. I don't know the answers, I'm telling you that. I don't know how to get this tax base going. Well, maybe, maybe you know the answer. Uh, I'd like to know how the court regulates or uh, have a regular fines and how is it regulated 
Is it uh, per capita? How do they? How do the? How do the court arrive at the fines of all the people for any any crime, any of the violations? Some of them are scheduled. I, I, you well, have to ask them to help out that. that. Well, but they're they're in the ordinance. They're in the charter. Five hundred dollars. Some of them are are can be different on civil infractions, but those are in essence established by council. What those fees would be now? Traffic is all state law. What what those fines can be? Okay. Well, well there was there any time that there was an order that maybe the fines are too high for the people? Well, remember that the the ordinances would suggest a maximum fine typically. It's then within the discretion of the judge and looking at the circumstances of the case as to what the precise fine is. So, you know, it's somewhere within a range, say, of zero to five hundred dollars. But then there are court so costs who, that so can be assessed. That council? No, no, that's that. The, the general parameters are set by council, but then the judge decides what to assess in any particular situation. All right. Can we do something about the about the the level of uh, high fines. I think fines are too high for anything in the court. Just the, the simple violation of this. You know, I see a lot of the fines, and I know a, a lot of times if it's a first type offense and a more minor offense, you know, you see fines that aren't, aren't really all that high. Still 150 bucks or nothing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes. Okay. But again, why, the, why remember, remember what the cost is for the court to process a violation all the way through potentially a jury trial and sentencing. That is a cost. And so the court should assess, even if it's a small fine, there should be some court cost assessed. There's no such thing as a small fine well, anymore. I, I do see them. I do see them, Mr. Lance, where some of them are not all that high, and the court a lot of times is trying to recover the cost of bringing the person well, of course, through I know the that. system. I know that, but it's still too high. And again, that would be a, that would have to be a discussion with the judges, because again, well, that's talk to the judges. Oh, I was just saying that that is a discretionary act on their part. I, I guess certainly counsel yeah. could. Well, who, who would regulate the judge like what they find people? Well, yeah. well who, who would it fall on? I mean, I suppose if they're acting outside of their authority, ultimately it would be the judicial Well, we don't know what the authority is. You're saying that the, the cost is so great they have to. Well, they're within their authority, though. Well, if we have to change that, that number in the authority. So who establishes the authority? You establish the authority okay. in terms of what, is, what are the outside parameters and the state law right. dictates so how do I outside. go about uh, working on it in order for something? Well, I don't, I don't know whether you'd want to maybe have a discussion with the judges, I suppose. If that Why not? Why not? Well, I, I'm just saying if counsel would be so inclined to say that we'd like to have a discussion with the court as to what their fines are and what that the what the basis what's the basis yeah. for their fines? If the council wants right. that. Right. No. No, they're a they're a district uh, court. So can I get an answer from the council? Is anybody interested in finding out? Um, anyone else? Mr. Lance is proposing that we have a conversation with the judges about uh, fines. Is there anyone else that's interested in this? I think that before we bring the judges in and tell them that the fines are too high, we need to take a look at what other communities are charging. See if we're why, why, why? We're, we're, we're First of all, a fine is keeping from doing. The fine is to prevent from doing it again. The other cities are doing. The fine is to prevent from doing it again. Our people here in Southfield. A fine is designed to keep it from doing it again. So they ought to be don't punitive. Give me, don't give me that. I know that. They ought to be punitive. I want to know why it's. I got a ticket for going over the speed limit. You oh, better believe I'm watching the highway drive now. So you're so you're a felon or what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a felon, but I'm not a felon. <laughs> no, all, all all joking aside, we have to find out why. Uh, you know, before. Um, we talk to the judges, I also think we need to know exactly what the fines are, the ranges. Yeah. Um, well, get so the information. Just some homework. So some, some homework has to be done prior to 
having a conversation. I, I, don't, think any any of it, there is I don't think anybody uh, here <laughs> on the table knows what the fine schedule is. Oh, no, I, I'm totally getting it. I, I, I will just say this. Um, I get a chance to look at these relationships in a little different format. Uh, sit on the board of the Risk Management Authority, which is uh, where we have our it's the largest uh, largest uh, liability pool in the state of Michigan, and one of the largest in the country. And what you find out is how important it is that there's harmony between the city and the courts, because where there isn't, uh, it, gets, it, it, it involves litigation and pain. Well, if we question the fines, it's dishonorable or honor, honor something. Why? Why, why, should we, why? why should we hesitate asking them why they're uh, for all the asking, it's just that I think we should do it with a, in a respectful approach. Well, of course. We could look at have them try to look at what's their average fine <laughs> and average cost that are set. That would probably be something they could provide. I don't think that would be accurate. I want, I want categories. Uh, categories of offenses. So, yes. for example, drunk driving, they would assess. But see, you know, it, it's. It, it varies. Or, so if you, if or you accident or hitting a wall. Well, those are those, a lot of those are just state. Those are kind of standard fines that the state set. Can you exclude the state fines? Yeah, if you kind of exclude a lot of the traffic, and you yeah, talk about. Yeah. But a lot of it is based on: is this person a first-time offender, or or are, is this their sixth offense? And so you'll see a variation. Yeah, is there often. a record of that? I, you know, honestly, Ms. Watson, I don't know how you would pull that information out because it is so dependent on yeah. the circumstances of the individual before the judge. No, there are categories of violations. Right, but a say, say a, a retail fraud. So it's it's a it's a 19 year old person that steals something from Target. There would be a fine assessed. Now, if that person is back in front of the judge and it's their fifth offense. Well, the, the judge is probably going to assess a larger fine and, and maybe additional costs. If that happened in Southfield, after the second offense, it goes to Oakland County and we mm -hmm. don't have anything not, more to not do with it, and they go to jail. Not necessarily. The county has to agree to write the warrant. And a lot of times they'll still say, oh, it's a $10 retail fraud from Target. We don't want to write it, and we still write it here in the city. I, I've seen them where they have four and five retail frauds on their record. In many cases, the people will go to counseling. And as a matter of fact, they'll have the fines will be quite low. Well, so I'll go to you know, I'll, I'll, I'll we, we just about we just talked to counseling, University of Phoenix. Mm -hmm. okay, we're trying to arrange for that. I'll talk about people that have turned over to Oakland County after the second or third offense. Drunk driving that happens. Yes, and they're sent to jail instead of therapy and help. Okay, that's outside that's of our court, though, but. That should be looked at. Mm -hmm. Because those jails are full mm -hmm. of women, black women, who were fined and went to jail six months. What and kind I of spoke event? about that at a, at a judge's meeting uh -huh. a couple of months ago, the black judge's breakfast mm -hmm. I was invited to. And I asked the judges. The answer I got was, that's mandatory. That's it. They don't have mm -hmm. any discretion. They have discretion. They don't care. Go to Oakland County and see how many women are in jail there. I, I would venture to say, though, that you'll find they're repeat offenders. Okay. But then there are safe houses all <coughs> over the city. That's a three-month term with therapy and everything. Mm -hmm. Why don't they use those houses?
I would add to the earlier uh, I hate to tie up too much of Ms. Ward's time. One, one of the one of our uh, governance challenges here is uh, the legal department's down 58 percent in uh, in JD staff. In other words, licensed attorneys. Uh, so I, I'll. Maybe I can do some of the late work. Uh, I've, I've been talking. Turn this over to the court administrator. Yeah, I, not I, in this ward. Yes. Uh, I think she she's very cooperative. Yeah. And have her give us um, a uh, report on what the fines are at the start. We don't know what the fines are. Are you talking about non traffic? Yeah. Non. The, anything the state. Well, they could be we have no control of traffic. Right. Well, your 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 fines are generally to five hundred dollars. Yeah. Okay. Mr. President, why are we getting involved in the courts? You know? yeah. We don't run the courts. It's not a municipal court anymore. Why? Why is it court and not the budget? Because, because, right. because we get we get money from the court, or we revenue, give them money. Thank you, Mr. Yeah. Yeah. This is going to be a major thing that I need four people to say they want it. So far, we have two. Why do you need four feet wide? Because that's our rule. I, I'll, I'm a, I, don't, I think that this is, uh, we're not the court system. There's a breakdown in role of government, and if a, if a judge has it hers or her own discretion no, but they're to, in our budget. to find. They're in our business. You know. But you only get revenue. You only well, get revenue. Well, we're not you don't have expenses. We do. Okay. Revenue. We're, we're, we're taking money from the from the We well, have expenses, but the revenues exceed their expenses. Their expenses. I don't agree with spending staff time on this. Okay, we have two people that are interested in this. I, I need four for this well, to go forward. If I know how it lifts, but it's going to help us, I don't know, but I'm not going to go far blind. Everybody take into the court system. And we don't have, it's 218 people short, and we're going to start to key in on the on the court with all these other situations here in the city that, we, that have high priorities for us to tangle with. I'll contact a hundred people out there who will find a lot of money and I'll tell them you said so. Right, Mr. Lynch, you can tell uh, those people again, all you want. Give my telephone number too. Right, right, yeah. Give um, my telephone number. We're going to move on. Yeah, I want to see who in this budget. Yeah, um, we're getting back to that. I have a list of people who want to speak. So what are we doing? And uh, matter of fact, Mr. Uh, for half a year now. Are we referring this to the court administrator yes. or no? I'm sorry? Is this being referred to the court? No, we don't account? have four people. Okay, thank you. We have two. So. <coughs> well, I ask that we look at how, what, uh, what we're going to get into. I mean, I, I don't want to investigate the court and see, you know, why are you giving this guy a penalty and not this one? I didn't say oh, that. I, I, so I said categories. But, right. but no, no, no. Just I thought we were moving on. But municipal codes, we fit to see on those. Correct? Our ordinance is yeah. Our dictate ordinance this dictate right. those a fines. A $500 fine, uh, several right. fractions. You just, you just uh, approved one not too long ago. Correct. All right. But as far as the, the district court, that's their prerogative, what they do. So it's your, you, you approve. So we're not budget. <laughs> And we have something to say. Okay. Uh, Mr. Percanti, you may have to speak on the question. Mr. Chairman, I looked at the agenda that we had tonight, and um, and I was surprised to see the budget on it. The budget, in in uh, my estimation, is the most important document that we have. Uh, anything else we do, and it's not just numbers. It's it's what we're going to do, be doing the plan. They had a vision. It took a whole night for a vision of where we're going and what we are. You know, everybody goes around circling and says, you know, what we want the city to be. But it can't be anything unless the numbers work. And, and that's what is missing here is how do we equate the numbers to getting the job done. And, and, and that takes time to go into, you know, the departments and the projects and what we got planned for this year, and, and what is the bottom line going to be? If it's economic development, how do these things weigh out as far as economic development and marketing? I mean, and, and in all due respect, Mr. Shred, 
I'd rather give anybody five hundred thousand dollars anymore. They can go to Vegas on their own. They can go to Macon on their own. I, I, that five hundred thousand dollars has got to be a plan for marketing, and somebody's going to have to be accountable to the money, and we're going to have to see some kind of, of substance coming back that we can see, and whether it be getting a company in here, but, but you know. Uh, we see this us being attacked by by Detroit and Novi and everybody else, and and we, and marketing is is just one little segment of it, but getting the word out among the other entities that affect the marketing and our, and our and our corporate people, such as real estate people, how are they projecting the city when they go out and try to lease their space? I mean, and a good example is, and I talked to Terry about it, is the doggone lofts next door. I mean, it's crying what they did over there. And we've got nothing more but wholesale multiples. That's all that is. I mean, it's not, not a plan. I mean, for 30 years we worked on a plan for the city center. And we go over there and they got a couple of young ladies standing in a the room that got walked through a construction site, you get to them, you went up an elevator, and you're going up with, with a carpenter that's putting up cabinets. You go into one of the lofts, they don't even have lights on yet. I mean, the whole thing was so shabbily done, and it just, it's a type of development that we have approved in this city, and we just have not even, I mean, at least I thought it was going to be a mixed use. All right? It takes the most, most prominent corners Skinner Drive and Central Park Boulevard. That's the entranceway with the flags and the whole center. And, and we've got this piece of garbage being built over there. You know? And, and, and it's embarrassing. I mean, I mean, I mean, we're losing all our class, and I don't care if the thing ever got a permit. And, and I get frustrated because for 30 years we've been working over there. I told Terry, that's been all of my whole life as a mayor. He's trying to get this thing built. But the numbers, the numbers and what we do with the numbers and, and all those things we set for, for three, four hours, say, going around the table, what do you think is a priority? You can't do a thing unless you may have a number. And, and that's why it's so important. How are these departments being run? How, how deep are the cuts? And how is it affecting us going forward? I mean, we've got some real serious, serious problems with our cuts. And 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 I and I and I'm not going to. We have an administrator who's running the city, doing a doggone great job about it. But but you know, I tell people for a long time. You know, when when I heard this professor talk, you know, you can keep touch with saxophones and drums and this and that. If you don't care what the music sounds like, you know, that's what you get. And and that's what I think is happening. I mean, we have roads that are just blowing up all over this city. I mean, it's embarrassing even to go down the street anymore. And I suggested that we put this on for for November to, to the people of this city to vote for a bond issue and, and, and get this thing done and get uh, and don't wait till next year because by the time you, you get your program and you get the, the roads that you need to get done and you get engineered, and you get them done, you're talking about years, two years away. And by that time, another two winners come, we're going to have a capacity. We've got zero in major fund, uh, road fund. We've got zero in local roads fund. I mean, we're we going to fix all these things. And, and I guess I just sit in here quiet listening to this stuff. And, I, and re I, with all due respect, Mr. Lance, I, I know what you're talking about. I feel sorry for these people putting away to and have no money and no way out. But at the same time, you know, this city's infrastructure is, is falling apart. And, and, and we have to look at the numbers and say, how can we best save it? And, and, and it, affects, it, it affects marketing of the buildings. I mean, every remote, 100 times you hear from the people, I got, I'm in, in town center, where are you going to fix Evergreen Road? It's embarrassing, I have my clients come up. And, and we got to get things fixed. I know it's a lot of money, but we just got to set our minds to getting it done, like everything else, make it a priority. And, and like I said, the priority comes out of there. This document, the most important document we have. Mm -hmm.
Uh, we found out there were some redundant steps that we had taken that were conforming to old regulations that had changed and there's a streamlined way, just as example. So that's what we'll do with that function. In the meantime, that money's out of the budget. Okay, that's how the that's how these numbers get these these huge negatives that you that you're seeing. Right, which uh, is precisely my point because if we had a loss of personnel and purchasing, which equated to dollars coming out of the budget, the same took place with first office. Correct. Clerk's office is 55% down right now. No, but in the budget it says 872000 and it actually goes up for next year. Well, that's because there are some vacancies that haven't been taken out yet, Clerk. So are happen. those going to come out? Um, we, we have, we're, we're working on a, a plan for in the group. Uh, Nancy and I are working together to see if we can come up with a game plan for this department because it's governance. It's uh, as I pointed out in the items that I handed, that were handed out uh, at the conclusion, uh, there are a couple of departments that have directly to do with the governance of the city, uh, charter governance. One is the legal department. It's on this handout here. Okay. Okay. You could take a look at it. It's kind of a one-page synopsis of it. It's uh, with Sully on the back. Right. Safe landing. Okay. You're going to see that, as we mentioned, in the legal department, we're down 58%. This is direct governance for the city. It's the it's the heart and soul of the charter mandates of the city. But I, but I think it is true. When you look at this, it shows that our budget actually is up. Well, but that's because those people, have yeah. those positions, have not yet right. been eliminated out of here. Because we're we're not assuming we can run forever with 58 down. Okay, so that budget does it. So as the city attorney's city dollars. And then the assistance that left yeah. last week. Most, most of the operating normal day-to-day -day budgets, we took the money out. These two, okay, money's still there. Community relations, mm -hmm. same thing. Yes. That's up. Uh, community yes. relations. Yes. Yes. Community yes. relations. Yes. Yes. I guess I'm not seeing the... the yeah, what, what, we're, what we need to do is a reconciliation, which is underway. Uh, for example, uh, Mr. Rosenthal's resignation happened after this budget document was put together. Okay, so if that position that position would would come out, especially in light of the 500,000 we've got earmarked that has a marketing component, that that would come out, and the final number for community relations would be down to that of the number of dollars of that position. So, so because I'd like to make sure that we're not putting money in the budget for those positions to be filled. No, they well, there's, are there's no assumption they'll be filled. Okay, because I definitely agree we need to look at legal department and see if we need to put additional I'm also concerned because we had a meeting with Mr. Lowenberg a couple of months ago and even last week in our council finance committee meeting and he needs that department needs an additional person. And so these are positions that we're going to have to fill. So I don't know if you want to put that those figures in the budget or uh, they, it, it needs to be fine. It needs to be fine-tuned. Okay. We might want to leave them in for this budget with an understanding you can't expend it. That's what we do. We we if, if, if something is shown as personnel, okay, we don't allow it to be moved around. You can't spend it on something else. Okay. So in essence, it's 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 earmarked and it doesn't go anywhere. So while this is being worked out, for example, the the. Overall configuration of the legal department right now, we're not positive and the mayor isn't here, so it didn't, I don't think it's appropriate to get into detail discussion of that. And and Nancy and I have talked about the clerk's department because she's done a lot of efficiencies. She used to have 11 people in her budget, <coughs> okay? She's done a lot of changes, the department's done a lot of changes, and so I'm not positive <laughs> what they need now, but probably it's more than the five they have right now. So we need to come back with a recommendation for that. So my suggestion would be, since this budget gets adopted on the 17th, and probably 
you know, leave, leave those pretty much alone, those two departments. Uh, I would, uh, the community relations, I think we can take down. But uh, th th these are, it, it's too direct to the governance of the, of the entire city to, to take that money out and to make an automatic decision that we're going to not fill any of these jobs over there. I mean, at, for example, you've got 2.5 attorneys now. You used to have six. Okay, you got Sue Ward, you've got uh, a part time uh, person, mm -hmm. and you have Don. Mm -hmm. That's it. Right, and they work up, they do the ordinance prosecution. Okay, so <laughs> that's not probably the appropriate level that we end up at. And, you know, like I said, in clerks, we've got to have a discussion. It's, it's somewhere uh, more than five. Less than eleven. So, four, well, okay, I just four career, four. but that's one of the one of the issues. One of the people there is non-career status. So can you bring all the positions back? The ones that you'll have. So yes. You yes. That money won't be expended. But I do think this is just my own. Those employees will they be laid off? 
So we have to reshuffle the dollars, get more staff. I mean, that's a real possibility that those dollars may not come from the I, I suspect we would try to find the dollars. And so, again, uh, because we don't have specificity at this point, okay, I just hear Mark a number. All right? But that doesn't mean it has to be expended at all. It's simply earmarked for something to do with the tax base. The tax base is our huge problem. Priority one, two, three, four, and five. Fill the tax base, okay? Because it's not producing the type of revenues we need to provide the services long term that we want to have here. And so that's why it's there. I mean, if if, if we're undecided and we don't want it to show. We'll take it out of the finals, and then council can bring it, can, can uh, you know, see if funds are available later and reallocate it. But I wanted to put it in because there have been discussions about what are we going to do about this tax base? What are we going to do about some of the things that are detracting, like some apartment buildings uh, in certain areas that are starting to be way below standard? Okay. What are we going to do about certain neighborhood issues? What are we going to do about um, basically attracting new business? And Councilman Percassi has aptly pointed out that you know if your roads are crumbling, that's a problem, a big one. So you know I, I, I do I will say that we're not sure what the use of those funds would be, but a lot of discussion came out surrounding that we're going to need to do something about this tax base. And so that's what I wanted to reflect in the budget. Now, when we approved the paper grant, wasn't there a discussion uh, if these individuals should the funding end that they would not be absorbed in our in our program? Well, you can't get those funds if you say that you got a plan to lay them off. No. You, if you well right, but if you if the funds don't yeah. come in, you yeah. have the right to, at the end of that two years you have the right to lay them off. Yes. Once the funding stops, you have the right to lay them off. So if we don't get approved for this funding, we have the right to lay them off. And the are not required in, to be funded. In the justification and the hoops I had to go through. We've been through two hoops so far. New ones. Okay. Uh, I presented that that the layoffs were a potential, okay, and a probability. I put it in there, and trying to trying to convince the federal authorities to give us a re-up. Could happen. Okay, I, as long as that is. I mean, if we don't get the extension, I'll come back to council, and we'll have to have a discussion of how are we going to do this, because something will have to give somewhere. That's all things being equal. If if there are retirements, in the meantime, that might change the water on a mini. Right, right. Well, there not a big year. For the not a big year in fire for retirements. I think there's one or two. Maybe. But I have to say, you know, um, Jim and the staff and even the council, we have done a monumental job when you look at the tax appeals that we face and the, the property uh, mm -hmm. values declining and we're still above close is, is, is great. But I think we still have to be very, very cautious moving forward and not just, you know, open the checkbook and say five hundred thousand dollars a year and you know, we're gonna keep the firemen. I think we still have to continue. And you know, um, you know best Oh yeah. No we're thank you. We uh We've made some progress. We've got a long ways to go, and we're still in the negative zone. We're still, uh, we still have a tax base that's declining. Yeah. Right. Mr. Land? Yeah, uh, I stepped out for a moment, but you're still talking about the, the marketing. Right. All right? Okay. No marketing, you should spend a million bucks for marketing. That's the, that's the priority we should have now, is to bring in new business and hire outside experts to do it for us, who are all based all over the country. Those are people who can do it for us. And that's what we need. Marketing is the most important thing we can do at this time.
time because of lack of revenue from the state and the economy and everything. We have we have big developers from Detroit coming in and stealing our people to go downtown. So we have to counter that. Five hundred thousand dollars is nothing in the marketing business. I used to be in marketing. I know. And I work for big companies. And I know what marketing is. But we should work on marketing and not turn it down and laugh at it and it's not important and do do all right, uh, car parking and all that. Okay. <laughs> but I say we should think about it and do something. And keep it in the fight, keep it in that budget, as you say. Keep it in, but it's not expended. No. You can say anything you want, but keep it in. Okay, we're done. All right. Uh, I had a couple of questions. Um, uh, so I'll pick up where Mr. Lance uh, left off on marketing. I agree with you. Um, I don't necessarily agree with hiring some big firm with high fees, but I personally believe we need a greater web presence. Um, we're, we're hearing in Michigan Municipal League as well as National League of Cities that people are making decisions about locating in communities and they don't even talk to you. They go to your web, the information on the web, and uh, there's a whole bunch that we could be doing with some, uh, some people who really have high tech skills in putting things on the web. Uh, um, all of our uh, our zoning available parcels that could be developed or redeveloped, uh, our areas that we want to see a tech zone, or uh, uh, you know the DDA wants a, wants a, a medical uh, corridor, uh, all of that kind of stuff uh, should be uh, should, we should be marketing um, via the internet. So what are we waiting for? Um, and and while. I'm pleased that the, uh, the committee that Mr. Moss is chairing is beginning to gel and take off. I don't know that we can wait for everything to come out of that committee. I think that, that, that we need the marketing now, and, and we do have a vacancy in community relations, um, uh, and, and I think the function needs to have a re examination of where we go from here. Um, uh, on, and Ms. Durden, I agree with you on what you said about the hiring freeze. I've had this conversation uh, uh, in chance with Mr. Charette that uh, we needed to do the hiring freeze. But I think after 220 employees, we've got to think about replacing some people. And I don't know how we, uh, this city can run with a legal department that is down to what it's down to. Um, and you want to hire outside counsel, you'll pay more than you will for in-house staff. Um, that's absolutely true. Uh, you know, so uh, I don't think that that's something that we should even think about contracting. I, I look to a con comment that uh, Fred made that an outside person told you they were working with Sue on the contract, and she's always you know, defective she was. And yeah, you know, if you pay for that outsourcing, you're huge. Yeah, our, our the cost of our legal department is half of what it was in the last city I worked at. Right. At, at the level of staff now, which with our with the two vacancies. So. Well, the, the reality is we live in a litigious society, um, and lawyers are part of it. And you better make sure that you uh, you've got your uh, T's crossed and your I's dotted uh, because somebody's somebody's going to sue you uh, every time you turn around. Um, the other uh, uh, I am really concerned about uh, our our apartment some of our apartment complex. I, I down in Providence uh, Drive you see you seen blue tarps on roofs, uh, shingles curled. Uh, that are uh, the, the roofs are crumbling. You you, you can see it, um, and uh, the the increase in rental homes in this community. It's not always uh, it's not always a good thing um, because there are landlords and there are landlords. 
Um, and, you know, Ms. Gardner and I went to the tax sale um, last summer, uh, the Oakland County Treasurer's tax sale. And there were people there that just bought, were buying up uh, properties. It was almost obscene. Um, and, you know, it, it, their whole thing is how can I, uh, I flip the property, make a buck, um, and they're not necessarily going to do us uh, any favors. Uh, as far as really investing in uh, aging housing stock. And uh, this, um, this included condos. There were, there were people there just buying condos uh, in Southfield. Um, one woman, I think she bought 15 uh, uh, condos that were in the tax sale. Um, and Mr. Uh, uh, sir, I have a question for you regarding the table TV farm. Um, on page 20, it's recommended that the revenues will be uh, 1.1 million. Correct. Um, and the expenditure is the same. Um, yes. Can you tell me uh, where uh, where are we now with uh, the UVerse funds? I know we get the the Comcast. I'm going to ask Sue for some help on that. Uh, she uh, she understands these these splits better than I do. I'm trying to recollect. Did Peg ever is Peg out on AT and T on Universe now? Is it is, yeah. is, is the government it. channel on there? I think yeah. it's on Okay okay so that that did get resolved. I, for a long time that was kind of withheld. We're holding the money. Right because because they wouldn't <coughs> show our channel so that we could watch it downstairs right. and know the quality. But I thought we had resolved that and that we just went ahead. So I, I know that uh, those monies from AT&T Ubers have been increasing. That there have been more yes. and more. But I don't necessarily think that there's been a real substantial re reduction in Comcast either. I mean, that, I think those funds have been increasing. Well, I, I would like to know uh, what's the source of this projected revenue of 1.1 million? Is it all Comcast? Um, well, well, both, right? right? It, it is both? I both. would have, both. assume it's both. Okay. It would be both funds to get both right. channels. Uh, we haven't had an update on that, so I, I wasn't sure. We we get, we're actually intending to come to council on June 10th to talk about a cable needs assessment. Okay. Maybe we could do a little bit of background on Okay. The revenues at that time. That's just much money. All right. Uh, is there anyone else? Yes, Mr. President. Yeah. Let me just clarify something, Mr. President. Uh, I'm Mark. You know, never have been here some of twenty some years, right? And we went outside and got Chadwick to come in to assist. After big bucks. They came back and said, you know, the center of it all is better than what we can come up with. Okay? He was head of code enforcement and cable. When he was head of cable, he had Channel 4 commercials going that were award-winning commercials that one of them ended up being on uh, one of his TV things, um, starring. <coughs> you know, it's if you lived in South, you know, you'd be home now. And so this guy, this traffic jam going like this, and, and this other hands would you would walk up the driveway, his kids would come chase him, mm -hmm. and he'd his bike, and the whole thing was, if you lived in South, you'd be home now. Uh, you know, this polo map had a lot of corporate people involved in that. <coughs> I think, in, in, in as far as is being in high tech, and, and I guess Terry can tell you that we have who is it? Board Crim. Board Crim now doing all the website and social media and Twitter and what else? Facebook, yep. anything they can get into. And and so so we're already doing that. The only thing you have to do is we want to expand is to get them to expand their their website to through the entire city, but they do the city <coughs> now. Yeah. So but we're still not getting, what I'm trying to get at it, we're still not getting anything yet from it. I don't know how long we had them, Terry. Just a year. Yeah. So, 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 anyways, I think that 
is that being in the business circle, the thing that really <coughs> gets to these developers is 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 contact and real estate people who make a buck on placing them and get them on your side <coughs> and 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 see what the concern is that you can't sell Southfield and then try to deal with it. And I think that's what we are talking about in our group here is to get a group. So I got Marshall Payton coming in, I got Huntington Bank coming in from the commercial department going to come in to give some input as to, you know, Mark was president of Urban Land Institute and, and to try to give us some kind of input of where to go with this group. But <coughs> I think we're on a track with it. And if I do is take, you know, what Terry has already got with the city center and expand that and get them doing it on the Facebook and all this other stuff that they're doing, website. Uh, I don't know how intensive it is right now, but but I guess what I'm trying to say is that, is that you know, we've got to find out what works and what doesn't work. And and right now, you know, we've got a lot of selling to do on one on one. And and uh, we've got to get to the people who are coming into Southfield and seeing whose leases are up and making that contact and say, hey, you know what, I can give you X, Y, Z if you move downtown. <coughs> and, I, and I said to to our guys on that thing, I said, you know, we say, hey, we're a safe city, we're a clean city, we don't charge uh, income tax, uh, we don't charge for parking, you know, come in our city. I mean, we've got it all going for us, you know, but, we, but uh, we're, not, we're not getting into that competition with these people who, who are, you know, getting... Detroit coming in and doing it, you know, and I, I got a laugh, I told Jim, I said, I said, Poldy left, and, <laughs> and Gilbert says, go away, punk, you know, <laughs> you're leaving Michigan, I mean, headlines in the Detroit yeah. news, I mean, I mean, you got to get nasty, you got to be tough, and, and we can be tough, we were tough before, we got to continue to be tough, we can outbeat everybody because we got location, nobody's got location that, that we do, nobody. And, 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 you know, we just have to reach that segment out there that realizes that, you know, it's a service business that we're dealing with. And, and they may have a meeting in the morning, but everybody's dispersed. And they may not see each other for a couple of days. And everything is by computer. And so, and so we just got to get into that new technology, that new way of doing things. But anyway, I just wanted to mention that, yeah. that you know, we... We've tried marketing, and I always said that we could spend a million dollars, which we did have, a million dollar budget, believe it or not, million dollar budget, and Bill Bonds could tell us in 20 seconds. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's the life of marketing. Um, Mr. Moss and Mr. Lamb. So just to clarify, there's a potential of $500,000 that could sit somewhere and, and, and have a recommendation made on it if there was a further study group that was mainly right. right. And your recommendation As of marketing. now, it is in the budget. But it's unallocated yeah. in any specific program. And, but it's earmarked, it can't be spent for anything else. So. And that, that takes into account tax base, takes into account uh, the apartment uh, problem, because some of those tarps are because we're getting after one of the right, apartments that's exactly big right. time. Okay, and we've got a whole study going on that one particular. Mm -hmm. But there could be some real costs involved. There may be eminent domain issues in some of these buildings. That's huge. So that's why I'm saying I, I don't know what it's going to take to get this tax base going. Yeah. But whatever it is, we got to find out. And if it doesn't cost 500 if you can do it for 5 bucks, good. Okay? The other 495 uh, could, can be used other 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 places. Yeah, and I, I think that we should form a work group uh, to study it because I think that, you know, what Ms. Jordan says is very true point to it. We need to be talking about real dollars that we bring to the table. And I think that's what we're doing on this Economic Development Committee. But Mr. Fercasti brought uh, a, a Cranes Detroit business to the table. They had a map of the region, and Southfield's name wasn't even on it. I think there are two reasons, two equally as heavy reasons of why we weren't on that list. Number one, you know, we don't have as strong of a, of a development going right now that we're kind of off the map because other communities are more hot right now in terms of development. But number two is I don't think we're, we're communicating our assets good enough. We could have
have a press release or, or some sort of strategy uh, every Monday night coming out of a council meeting based on just what we do on the consent agenda. The consent agenda is, is low-hanging fruit for us to say, and this is Mr. Zorn and I talked about this, it's low-hanging fruit. So if we can we keep communicating and, and sending it out, maybe we get back on that map. Um, so I, I don't think that these two things run against each other. I think one fuels the other, which fuels the other. So I would be in favor of forming a group that actually looks at what are we doing right and what are we what do we need improvement on. It might not cost the full five hundred thousand dollars. I don't know that it will cost a million dollars, but something. I, we need to have that conversation at least happening. I'm not. I, I, I agree with you. You can't just say here's your five hundred dollars, go spend it. But I think we should form some sort of work group that that works because I think we're dealing with the real dollars and the real development and economic development. And I'd like to see this kind of uh, more of a five hundred thousand foot looking down view in marketing. Because right now, let's say I was a, if I was a junior associate somewhere, any firm in the country, and they said to me, you know, Jeremy, I need you to research. We're looking to expand in perhaps Detroit market. Research it. We need to, we need to know what's going on there. I'm not making a phone call. People might, you know, I'm not making a phone call. I'm going to the website. I'm Googling it. And if I can't find what I want to find about Southfield on the front page of the website, I'm going to go to Troy's website. You know, I'm going to go see what's going on in downtown Detroit. I don't know that our website is effectively communicating what we needed to communicate. If our, I think you know we have a, a good website, I, and I don't want to denigrate the work that's been placed because it, it works, it's functional. But I almost think we could be better served by a website that just the front page is a five-minute video on the greatness of Southfield. There's no video on the front page of the Southfield website. So these are the things that are more, you know, kind of emotional. Will it work? Will it, will it not work? We do need to re deal with the hard, real dollars. Maybe parking is something we need to explore. But I would be in favor of a work group that is formed to say, we have $500,000 potentially. What could we want to do with it? And, and it comes back to council for final approval. It's like we treat the LERP with this. We don't touch it unless we really need to. So let's treat this $500,000. We don't touch it unless we really need to. And if this work group can come to council and really convince us that this is a plan that needs to go forward, I would be in favor of it. I would be because I think it's they work hand in hand. They don't work against each other. The real dollars and the marketing work work in conjunction with one another. This is exactly why we put it in support services. It's not an operating department. Those dollars belong to the, the council. Mr. Lamb. Yes. The key the key to our success are our developers. Our developers, <coughs> you get a cadre of 60 developers, lower their square foot prices, advertisers, fight for the fight for the for the people to come into their buildings. Then we'll have success. But we don't have that. They're all hungry and greedy. They charge the top price for square feet. They're killing us. That's why Dan Gilbert is coming into our place. Our city is taking our people to downtown because we're getting cheaper rates down there. But if you get our developers and talk turkey to them, then they also will, will, will succeed. But we're not doing that. All of our developers only are suing us and want to take from us. That's what's happening now. Talk to our talk to our developers. Get a hold of Fred. Talk to <coughs> our developers. Send Shelley down there. Talk to each one. Read the right act to them. I know some developers, boy, they can't wait to get a new tenant to charge them the, the 900 for a, for a one bedroom. And, and it's tough to compete when Bedrock Gilbert's Group's giving me a, th a year lease. I know. You should hear the people from the Colton County's Economic Development Group about <coughs> the rating and roaring. I know. I mean, they're living one and two years free rent, and uh, well, get a hold of our developers. They can do it too. Because they're empty. But they're a greedy bunch. I know a lot of them. They wouldn't give a penny. <coughs> Is there any other uh, discussion on the budget from anyone around the table? I would only like to say that uh, I think Jim has done a magnificent job of putting this budget together and holding us together year after year and, and with uh, declining revenues. Uh, I don't know how he does it, but uh, no, the team, thank goodness he is. A lot of folks yeah. in the departments. Appreciate it. <coughs> thank you very much. Um, well, I'd just say, to add to what Larry said, I mean, the job that you've done in this budget is amazing. 